Hey guys, Ivan here and in today's video we're gonna do something fun. We are less than two weeks out of the Mr. Olympia 2024 and in this video I'm gonna give you my top 10 prediction of this show and as you can see right here we have the list, all the 19 qualified guys. Two of them for sure are not doing it, that's Tony O'Burton and Nathan Diasha. Bekru Tabani is still a question mark, but we are not going to include him in this prediction either because he's most likely not going to be able to show up. So right here I highlighted my top 10 and that's going to be Derek Lansford, Harry Chopin, Samson Daura, Rafael Brandao, Martin Fitzwater, Nick Walker, Akeem Williams, Brandon Curry, uh, Andrew Jack and Hunter Labrada. So as you can see, Theo Laguerre didn't make the top 10. Of course, he's probably going to be one of the last places. I'd say the same thing about Bruno Santos. Now, when it comes to Mo Fura, John De La Rosa and John Jewett, you know, those guys are good. Maybe they will surprise, but I don't have them in my top 10. Now, as far as that 10th spot, I was really not sure whether to include William Bonac or not. I was torn between him and Akeem Williams for that top 10. And I decided to go with Akim Williams. Unfortunately, in my top 10, Bonak didn't make it. William Bonak is a phenomenal competitor. I mean, he was second at the Mr. Olympia. He won the Arnold Classic twice, but he wasn't that good this year. And I don't know what to expect from him at the Mr. Olympia. I know he will beat Akim Williams from the back, but from the side and from the front, I think Akim is much better. And if he brings conditioning, if he shows up the way he was at the Arnold Classic Ohio or Arnold Classic UK, not exactly the way he was at Toronto Pro, but I think he's going to be much better here than he was at Toronto Pro. I think he's going to bring what he brought to the Arnold Classic. If he brings that kind of conditioning, you know, with his small waist, massive arms, crazy thick legs and chest, super insane uh, side poses, I think he's going to edge out William Bonac. I'm not sure about it. It might be Bonac who actually cracks the top 10, but I'll just go with Akeem Williams in my top 10. Akeem Williams has a lot of freak factor, like those biceps are some of the best in the world right now. I would say his and uh, Nick Walker's biceps are currently the best biceps in the world. And you can probably say the same thing about Akeem's chest and potentially about his quads as well. Some of the biggest chest and the quads in the world. Now, yeah, his back, especially back double bicep, is extremely weak, and that's why I don't have him higher, and he is not exactly super consistent with conditioning, so I'm not sure whether he's going to bring crazy level of conditioning like he brought to the Arnold Classic stage, but if he does, top 10 is for sure, pretty much. Now, let's go to 9th place, and here I'm gonna go with Rafael Brandau. Now, I know Rafael already placed 10th at the Mr. Olympia, but that was two years ago, Things have changed since then, a lot of great guys are in this top 10 today, and even though Rafael made a ton of progress, I, I don't know if he can place higher than that. Maybe he will, but as of right now, I have him in ninth. Rafael already beat Takim Williams in the Arnold Classic, so I'm pretty sure he's going to do it again. The thing with Rafael is, he has like all the poses, everything is looking good. And this is Tyler Mannion's words, he has no weak poses, everything is good, so he's a very complete bodybuilder, not as big, not as freaky, not as round as some of the other guys, not as crazy from the back, but like his back is not weak, everything is, everything is good, everything is decent, and he's a taller guy, he is very aesthetic, he has a really nice waistline, and so he must be inside of that top 10, actually 9th, but I don't see him beating some of the other guys who are like bigger, more round, more freaky, since this is open bodybuilding. Now, in my 8th place this year, I'm gonna have to go with Hunter Labrada. I hope Ben Chow is not going to watch my prediction, but if he does, I'm gonna have to go with Hunter here. It's two spots lower than last year, I know, and it's uh, four spots lower than his best result. But after seeing what his midsection looked uh, at Italy Pro, I don't know, man, I really didn't like that. It's really distracting, if you ask me, and they're penalizing the guys for that very, very heavily these days. So I don't think he's gonna do that well, unless he learns how to pull a vacuum, a deep, deep vacuum, and keep it all the time, basically. So today he posted a, a physique update in which he's doing a vacuum in the, in the front double bicep and it does look uh, so much better, but he only does it in that one pose. I don't think he's going to be able to like keep it tucked in at all times. So yeah, I see him in 8th and that is potentially going to be a little bit of a gift because of his name. 
You know, if I if there wasn't for his name, I would probably have him. I don't know, man. Probably below Rafa, to be honest. But yeah, eight is gonna be my prediction for this show. Now we come to seventh spot, and this one is really tricky. I wasn't sure who should I put here. But I'll go with uh, Martin Fitzwater. I'm pretty sure he is going to beat Hunter Labrada, even though Hunter is bigger and thicker and has more like uh, muscle maturity. He is like more dense and probably has also a very aesthetic shape because of the midsection. That's the only reason why I'm going to put uh, Martin above Hunter Labrada in my prediction. I have him in seventh, so this is going to be his first Mr. Olympia. I mean, maybe he can place even higher, it's not impossible, Nick Walker placed 5th at his first Mr. Olympia, but with this lineup, I still gonna go with 7th place, which is an amazing result for Martin, let's be real, I mean, maybe he can place higher, maybe 6th, I don't know about 5th, that's probably not gonna happen, maybe 6th, but I'll go with 7th, I think it's a safe bet, I'm gonna try in this prediction video and be like completely realistic and try to really predict what's gonna happen, I'm not gonna go with who I like the most, who I want to see do well, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna be as realistic as possible based on what I saw so far, so Martin 7th, which means that in 6th it can be only Brandon Curry. Now, the reason why a lot of people don't have Brandon Curry placing very high this year's Mr. Olympia is because they're kind of expecting him to finally fail, for age to catch up with him. And also considering that uh, Abdullah basically said that he didn't have a productive offseason, that he was not focused, that he was very small and fat in the offseason, and that Abdullah dropped him, that he has a new coach, new team, maybe he's not going to be at his absolute best, but I think there was some talk of that even last year, that he's not going to be at his best, and, you know, he also was hospitalized the day before, and on the stage he actually looked very good, and he managed to beat guys like Andrew Jack, Hunter Labrada, who were very good last year, and this year, if he doesn't go to hospital the day before, and he peaks well, and he brings back the size that he had last year, you know, Brandon is very good, he won the Mr. Olympia for a reason, I mean, his upper body is amazing. You know, chest, back, arms, shoulders, uh, midsection, waist size, everything is spot on. Legs, not the biggest, very small, I have to say, from the front, but from the side, they're actually very good. From the back, also, not the deep separation in, in the glutes, but like hamstrings are okay. You know, so I don't think he should be underestimated, I don't think he fell off the wagon, I think he's still looking very good, very fresh still has a ton of muscle, yeah, I don't think he's gonna be able to beat Andrew Jack this year, he beat him last year, but this year, no, Andrew Jack leveled up, but the other guys, no, I don't see it, and also, Brandon has the name, you know, he is the Mr. Olympia, and as long as he's fine, as long as he's not completely off, he's gonna have a slight advantage, so I feel like Brandon is going to be top 6 this year, 6th spot. Alright, now it starts to get tricky, no matter which way I go, I'm gonna receive a lot of hate, because <laughs> these guys, the top 5 guys, have a lot of fans, and unless you put everybody in first, somebody's gonna hate on you, and I'm okay with that, that's gonna happen, it's unavoidable, somebody will ask me, am I blind, am I drunk, am I crazy, but let's go, let us still do it, in my top 5, in the 5th spot, I'll go with the Mona Lisa of bodybuilding, Andrew Jacked. I know a bunch of you guys think he's going to win the Mr. Olympia, or at least beat a couple of guys in that top 5, but not the way I see it. And you guys, if you watch my video, you know why. It's because of his back shots and his side shots, even though he's the best in that top 5, he's the best one in the front shots. Maybe not most muscular, but, you know, front double, front lat, and maybe even absent eyes, not, maybe Heidi Japan is better than the absent eyes, but, you know, those two shots, front lat and front double, he's the best, he's the best in the world, but is that gonna be enough? He's just his freak factor, his crazy stature, his wow factor that he has, his crazy V-taper X-frame, is that going to be enough? to place higher than some of these guys who are much more complete than him, no, not the way I see it, he needs more conditioning in the glutes, bigger hamstrings, more details in the hamstrings, he needs bigger legs in the side poses, you know, thickness of the legs, he needs more thickness in the upper body from the side as well, and all those things are going to prevent him from placing higher than 5th, 
but still cracking the top five again like last year is going to be a great result all right now we come to the fourth spot and this one is gonna get me in big trouble i'm probably gonna receive a bunch of death threats and stuff like that and you already know who i'm talking about in my fourth spot i'm gonna go with the uh, hari chopin I know, I know how freaky he can get, and I know he was, his edition of the Arnold Classic was the best physique, in my opinion, since Phil Heath, so if he brings the same physique, he's most likely going to win the Mr. Olympia, the reason why I have him in Ford is because I think his best days are behind him, and this is a bold prediction, I really don't have much to base this on, it's just a hunch, Based on what I saw, like his training videos, his just walking around the gym videos, I feel like something happened and he's not going to be at his best. I know Hari is not old, that's not the reason why I think this is gonna happen. But guys, it happened with Big Ramy recently, he was the same age Hari Japan is right now when his physique crumbled down. Now why do I think that that's gonna happen to Hari? Well, multiple reasons, first of all, he has been competing since... I don't know, like very, very long time ago, he was very good as an amateur, so it's not like his physique started recently and that he is fresh, he is not fresh, he is no spring chicken, he started competing like a couple of decades ago, I think, and he is just like Big Ramy, kinda known for, you know, touching up his physique with certain, uh, with SEO, let's be, let's be honest here, I mean, I don't know for a fact, nobody knows for a fact, but, you know, it looks like he did, st he did stuff like that to his physique, and, you know, that causes necrosis, that causes the uh, muscle to break down, and, you know, it's only a matter of time when the look is gonna suffer, again, it might not happen this year, maybe I'm completely off with this, but based on what I saw so far in this prep, it kinda seems like uh, Hari Chopin is not gonna bring his absolute best to this year's Mr. Olympia. Also, maybe competing at the Arnold Classic tired him up. Maybe he stretched himself thin this year, maybe he spent himself too much and he won't be able to truly peak for the Mr. Olympia, unlike some of the other guys who are much more fresh than him. So, yeah, I'm gonna just have to go and uh, put Hari in that fort. And now we come to my top three. Did you guys expect this, for this to be the top three? Derek Lansford, Samson Daura, and Nick Walker. I don't know, maybe some of you actually saw this coming, but that's your top three. Who's gonna place third here? I'll go with Samson Daura. You guys know how big of a fan I am of Samson's physique, and I want to see him do well. He's also sponsored by the same company I'm sponsored by. So again, I want to see him win the Mr. Olympia, but after seeing what he brought to the France Pro, I think he was at his absolute best ever. I think he was. You know, I think he was improved, especially in the biceps and the lats. But conditioning. Conditioning wasn't where it needed to be. And, you know, if it was somebody else, somebody who is known for getting in condition quickly, I would completely discard the conditioning that I saw at France Pro. But since it is Samson, who has a lot of trouble getting in shape... I don't think he's going to be that much leaner, you know, since he like, he just competed, so he probably carved up for a couple of days, he lost a couple of days there, and he's going to be full of glycogen for the next couple of days, he won't be able to burn fat, he's gonna have to travel to the US to fly, he's gonna be tired, this and that, and then he needs to carb up for the Mr. Olympia as well, so realistically he has a couple of days only to work on conditioning, maybe like five days, right, so that's, that's not enough time. In my opinion, he needs like another 4-5 weeks to get in conditioning that Derek Lansford and Nick Walker are going to bring. So, even though he's amazing, he has the best shape, the best structure, pretty lines, super aesthetic physique, he is the tallest, the biggest, I just can't see him cracking the top two with, uh, with that conditioning. And if Hadi is not failing, if his body is still fresh, I think he is very likely to beat Samson as well, I don't see Andrew Jack beating him because of the reasons I just mentioned, you know, the side poses and the back poses, but Hari Chopin, that's a close one, I don't know what to expect from Hari really, but I have a hunch that he's not going to be at his best, and I'm pretty sure that Samson is not going to be ripped. Now we come to the top two, and I think this is going to be the top two, I think it's going to be between Nick Walker and Derek Lansford for the win. 
So who is going to win the Mr. Olympia? I mean, maybe this is not going to be the top two. This is in my mind, in my imagination. That's the way I see it. That's the way I predict this. Uh, I think uh, Nick Walker is going to be absolutely nuts, man. That, that's what I'm feeling. I think Nick Walker is bringing something absolutely insane. I feel like we're going to see something that we haven't ever seen before. He knows he has a shot at winning the Mr. Olympia, and that's what he always wanted, that's what he lives for, that's what he breeds for, and you guys saw what he looked like last year, two weeks out of the Mr. Olympia, I think this year he is going to push for that conditioning like a maniac, and he's going to come in super, super conditioned, and as big, bigger than ever, freakier than ever, harder than ever, and like uh, with those back shots and with those side shots and with all that muscle. And I think once he's completely shredded, his waist is going to go down as well. And I'm pretty sure he's going to practice his posing like a maniac and be able to control the midsection to present his physique the best way possible. I think we're going to have a crazy battle between these two guys. But Derek Lansford had an entire year to work on improving his physique. He only recently switched to the Open. I know he has flaws. Everybody in this top 5 has a lot of flaws. But Derek Lansford is probably the guy with the least amount of flaws. We can be sure he is going to be shredded from behind. Like his hamstrings, his glutes are going to be in. His back is going to be the freakiest, the best for sure, no doubt. One of the best backs in the history of bodybuilding. And based on what I saw, it seems like he improved the details from the front as well. It seems like he's gonna have more details in the chest and the shoulders. I don't know what to expect from his legs, but, you know, since he had an entire year to improve, and to me it seems like he is driven, man, like he is super motivated, he is really trying super hard to keep his title and to show that he's not just something that happened one year and that's it. Also, the fact that he is, you know, a good representative of the sport, that he is very good with the guys in the top, that he is willing to travel, to, to, to represent and do everything, I think it's going to be very difficult to dethrone him. And I don't think Nick Walker is going to be able to do that either. So, in my prediction, I'll actually have Nick Walker in the second spot. And as the winner of the Mr. Olympia, I'll go with Derek Lansford again. I think he's going to be two times Mr. Olympia champion. Whatever you guys think about my prediction, tell me down below in the comment section. Like the video if you enjoyed it or dislike it if you hated my prediction. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Also, I want to mention, if you guys want to show me some support, you can buy one of the hostile supplements and use the code EVEN10 for a 10% discount. And also, if you're looking for a coach, somebody who is very affordable and very, very available for you guys, you can hire me, just DM me on Instagram. And I also want to give a shout out to Joseph Dobleck for donating $100, PayPaling me $100 today, just for enjoying my videos. So thank you, man. If any of you guys want to do that as well you can dm me i'm gonna give you my paypal and you can do that if you want anyways guys thank you so much once again for watching see you soon all the best and bye bye